This is Qatar. Welcome to Qatar. Today I'm giving myself a budget of $60 to see what I can get in one day. I'm in Qatar, which has a reputation to be one of the richest and most expensive countries in the Middle East. So today I want to find out if that's true. Qatar is a country famous for its luxury tourism industry. The small country of just under 3 million people has been growing a lot in recent years. But only about 10% of its population is actually Qatari, with the majority being from other countries. Today is not about splurging or being frugal, but finding the best, most optimum way to spend the day. So I start the day off with an Uber ride. Uber is the best way to get around Qatar. It's super affordable. 15 minute Uber ride, $5. I arrive at Pearl Island. These are man-made islands, but more about that later. There's this cool breakfast spot I want to try. This place is famous for its Karak tea. Karak chai is made with black loose leaf tea, cardamom, and saffron. It's famous in this region. The price of the tea, $2. That is really good. I love saffron and I love adding it to tea, so that's really, really nice. We should definitely bring this to the US. I also get shashuka breakfast. Shashuka is a common breakfast in North America and parts of the Middle East. It comes with eggs and a variety of vegetables. It also comes with fresh chapati bread, also known as roti. It's absolutely fresh and delicious. The price is $8. I walk around Pearl Island to discover Qatar's luxurious side. There are yachts and cool shops, but now it's time to move on, so I order an Uber. The price, $5. I arrive at the National Museum of Qatar. The entrance fee, $13. This museum has very unique architecture and stunning gallery spaces. This place is for scholars and students, and the museum offers a new research center and laboratory. But my favorite part of the museum is this area by a light artist called Pipliotti Riest, where you can get lost in this room. It's super immersive. Overall, this is a really interesting and unique museum, and what I love about it is that you kind of get lost along the way. It's not too calculated, and I I think they do that on purpose so that it's sort of a journey of discovery. You kind of look to your left, you look to your right. I'm getting lost multiple times, but it's not an annoying thing. It's more of a thing of discovery. Okay, this was really cool, but now I'm hungry, so I head to a lesser known area of Doha. The Uber cost $4. I genuinely don't know where in Doha I am, but I love to see other parts of Qatar that no one really talks about. Here I find this Palestinian and Jordanian restaurant. It actually feels really cool to get off the beaten path of of the, the main places that you would expect to find in Doha. The nice restaurants, the malls, the beaches. This feels like just super cool and interesting and authentic. It's a Jordanian restaurant, but a lot of you know Arabic food from the region. And you'll find a lot of Filipinos here in Qatar. Many of them come here mostly for jobs, for work. They work for 10, 20 years. Um, so a lot of times in the restaurants and coffee shops, you'll be greeted by a nice Filipino smile. I order a chicken shawarma wrap. It comes with fries. The price, $7. That is an incredible tasting shawarma wrap. I also love that they give fermented veggies a lot of times with the food here in the Middle East which is supposed to be really good for you and your digestive health, but I'm no nutritionist. I also get a fresh lime drink, $3. Oh, and this yogurt drink because it's good for hydration on a hot day. The price, $1. I'm not gonna lie, I really expected Qatar to be a lot more expensive than this. I'm actually shocked with how inexpensive it is. So I thought Qatar would be super expensive. I'm honestly quite surprised and quite pleased with how inexpensive a lot of things are. You'll notice most of my rides are about 15 minutes and the price is only about four or five dollars for an Uber ride, which is quite amazing. I have a Zoom call, so I go take it from this coffee shop where I order a matcha latte. Matcha latte, two dollars. So far, my observations of Qatar, friendly people, happens to be good weather right now. I am here in April and overall, I have to be honest, I thought things would be probably 30% more expensive than they were. Um, but Qatar is relatively inexpensive compared to other big cities of its kind. I don't personally think you need a ton of time here. There's not a whole lot to do, but it is worth a visit, especially if it's like an extended layover for two or three days. Another two things I like about Qatar is the diversity. You meet people from so many different countries here. And the second one is there is a sense of optimism. There is a sense that things are going to be better and brighter tomorrow. And things are already quite good for most people that you meet, at least that's what it seems. So there's a nice sense of optimism. There's a sense of hope. There's a sense of like, let's make tomorrow better than today. And I like that because a lot of countries you go to, you don't necessarily get that energy. Next, I take one more Uber ride.
inside. This time it's only $3. Now it's getting dark, so I go to this souk called Souk Wakif. I walk around, and honestly, it's so beautiful to see culture and authenticity of this place and its people. I pass by this restaurant that I vibe with, so I get a table and sit down to order dinner. This again is called chapati, and they are so delicious. They're filled with pretty much whatever you want. So I order one with chicken and one with cheese. The price for both is just $3. So this is the cheese and honey. That is delicious, that's amazing. So the souk is a really fun area, but um, it can get a little bit chaotic, but not that bad. It's weird, it's almost like a calm, controlled chaos. And you would think anytime you go to a bazaar or a souk, there is gonna be chaos. So it's all part of the experience. I especially recommend you come at night because the vibe and the lighting is just really quite cool. That was a light dinner and I personally love Middle Eastern desserts, so I can't resist when I see this place selling kunafe. Kunafe is a filo dough pastry filled with cheese and often syrup is added too. Dessert, $4. This place is really crowded, so I actually couldn't find a place to sit and eat. So here I am trying to stand it. Hopefully I don't drop it. So what was cool is you have the option between two different types. I actually haven't seen that before. Oh my God, look at that. I'll be honest, I've had some amazing kunafe in Turkey, but this is really incredible. I'm impressed. And for the record, this was way too big for one person, so I didn't finish it. Okay, I did it. I spent $60 in Qatar. This place is certainly not cheap, but it's definitely not as expensive as one might think. While you can definitely do a day here for cheaper or way more expensive too, I think this was the optimum way I found to spend a day in Qatar. But go check out my other videos like $100 day in Dubai or $20 day in Vietnam to see my full range of cash budget challenges. And find me on TikTok and Instagram at Upton.